Steve Reynolds, University of Dundee. Uh, I've been associated with Dundee for a very long time, I have to say, before uh, I came to uh, the University of Dundee, uh, back in the mid-1980s, I was a, a lecturer at uh, the University of Abate, or Dundee College, uh, as it was at that point in time, Bell Street Tech. Um, I spent a couple of years in the, the mid-2000s working in Germany uh, to do with photovoltaic solar cells, and then I came back to Dundee, and since then I've been working here uh, in the School of Science and Engineering uh, in the Division of Physics. And I have to say to you, I've given a lot of talks um, to a lot of people, an awful lot of lectures, uh, and a lot of research talks as well, but I've never ever given a talk on advising. Advising is one of these things which you do. Uh, it's not really something, at least in my experience, that you, you talk about, but I will do my best uh, to give you an introduction to advising. Uh, most of it is about, I hope, good advising, uh, but uh, at the end I'll talk about um, maybe we don't do things in quite the, uh, the best way that we should uh, do in university. So there are possibilities to do things in other ways. Uh, so uh, I wasn't sure what kind of audience I'd have. There are a few young people uh, here, reasonable cross-section. Uh, is there anybody who's planning to come to the University of Dundee as an undergraduate in September this year? Possibly not that young an audience then. <laughs> Uh, so, much of this will already be known to you. Uh, there are around about 11,000 uh, undergraduates at the University of Dundee. There are 4,000 or so postgraduates. Uh, and every year, uh, I think you work it out for yourself, uh, four years of a course, about 3,000 students, new students, come to Dundee to, uh, to be with us for about four years. And ideally, they'll be here, uh, they'll attend their lectures, they'll enjoy their courses. The vast, vast majority do enjoy their courses here. Uh, they'll pass their exams, as that's very important. Uh, in doing so, going through their careers uh, as an undergraduate, they will have some fun. Uh, they will graduate and then move on and be successful in the world. This is what we're one of the uh, aspects of university. Of course, you've heard today that uh, other aspects of the university are related to research, and that's a very, very important aspect of, uh, of, of Dundee. So, um, as I guess many of you know, uh, teaching, assessment, course development, and, and so on are considered to be uh, academic uh, aspects of university life, and these are, these are carried out by lecturers and professors, which we refer to as academic staff, and there are also uh, many support staff without whom we could do nothing, uh, in the school offices and uh, the people who keep the lights on and so on and so forth, technicians, administrators, and in particular student services. Uh, as an advisor of studies, I have a close relationship with people who work with uh, student facing as well. Uh, so what is the role of the advisor of studies? Well, um, primarily it's associated with the uh, two aspects, as I'll talk about in a minute, academic and pastoral care. Many uh, undergraduates are away from uh, their parents and their dogs and cats and all the things they find familiar for the first time. So uh, it can be difficult for them when they're, uh, shall we say, coming to terms with an independent life. It's something they've craved for years, all their um, teen years of, God, when I get away from home, it'll be great. And then they get away from home and they find sometimes things aren't all that good. Uh, after all, there can be problems uh, associated with independence, uh, responsibilities that that entails, uh, and um, also the fact working at university, academic work at a university, is not like studying for your hires or advanced hires. It's rather different. So the university has its support uh, uh, services, uh, as Carl already alluded to. There are professionals here, people who are truly trained as counsellors, uh, careers advisors and so on, and then there are people like me, untrained. At least, oh, I like to think I know a few things about teaching and, and research and a few things about advising, but as I say, uh, primarily the advisor of studies is a, an academic member of staff, a, a researcher, a teacher, whatever, and they don't um, have any formal training in, uh, in counselling. They know a little bit about what to do with people who are very close to uh, harming themselves, for example, but by and large, uh, the, the, the process of advising is not a professional uh, aspect of our day-to-day -day lives. We do it professionally, but we're not professionally trained. Okay, so what do we do? Uh, two main uh, aspects of advising, I think it's true to say, academic support and pastoral support. So academic support, uh, many of you are academics, so I think you know what an academic life is. Uh, we, uh, with the students, we need to consider what, uh, what choice of studies they have to guide them in terms of what modules to pick in the final year of their studies, for example. Uh, aspects of their progression, in other words, if they fail, what do we advise them to do to seek to remediate their, their failure? 
um, how to work uh, better, how to fit in more with uh, what they need to do against what they feel inclined to do. Their own personal development, uh, we have to talk to them about the possibility of getting internships because working on your CV is very important. Uh, and uh, indeed, uh, whether when they, when they graduate, uh, the opportunities that there are for them to do high degrees uh, and uh, PhDs and so on, uh, they, this all needs uh, some, uh, some element of, uh, of advice or can do. Pastoral support is more about what we do when they're not uh, doing as well as they feel they ought to do in terms of their lives. So personal concerns that they may have, uh, these can vary very widely. Um, Students can get ill, they can get ill for long periods of time, they can become depressed, uh, they can have issues relating their balance of uh, time spent in paid work against their time spent in studies. This is an increasing issue, it causes a lot of difficulties for students and for staff as well, as students have to get to their work on a Thursday afternoon so they're not available for labs on Thursday afternoon. So you have to arrange for them ideally to do the labs at some other time. People also sadly die, uh, and unfortunately students are at the age where their grandparents often die when they're with us, uh, and this is very traumatic for anybody, uh, and so uh, often they have to be guided over these things. Uh, they can be, um, there are many ways we can, we can do this with professional counselling rather than uh, talking to people like me. So I'm a physicist, I work uh, in the, uh, the discipline of physics in the School of Science and Engineering. We have about 40 students on our first year program. And the very per first person that they meet is their advisor. The very first academic member of staff they meet is their advisor, which in, in the case of physics is me. Uh, we have a chat. Um, because there are about 40 or so students, it often isn't as long as one would like initially, but five or 10 minutes through the whole day talking to new uh, undergraduates. We get to know each other to some extent. And then we have meetings throughout the year to maintain that, uh, that relationship. In second and subsequent years, the relationship tends to be a little different. It's more by way of a, 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 we're around, the doors open. Uh, if they feel they need to talk to you about something, students will call by, or they will drop you an email, uh, and we will make an appointment. So it's really, uh, I would like to uh, consider it really from the, the point of view of the, the reality of advising as a, an academic member of staff. It's about signposting and triage. Triage, I mean by analogy to healthcare, it's about first aid or dealing in some cases with, shall we say, car crashes. Uh, not literally, of course, but uh, people who really have uh, had difficulties and gone a wee bit off the rails. Sitting them down, talking to them and finding out what the, what the problem is and then possibly seeking professional help after that is a, is a key uh, requirement. Uh, fortunately, as I said, uh, the university's uh, put a lot of work in recent years uh, into student services on a professional level. So we now. Uh, have a team of trained counsellors uh, and advisors so that if I simply uh, am way out of my depth, I can quite literally take a student, uh, assuming they agree to it, of course, I'm not going to pull people along after me, but take them along to student services uh, if they're in danger of uh, really having serious problems. So the Inquiry Centre is a, is a, um, a centre on campus. It's uh, near the, the university shop, probably many of you have seen it, painted red, so it's quite visible. Uh, and uh, students can call by there, they can drop in. So in a sense, uh, if they have uh, a range of requirements, they don't have to go to their advisor of studies, they can go directly to the inquiry centre and in a, in a way get a similar service from the inquiry centre in many aspects uh, that they would get from me. But of course they don't get academic advice from the inquiry centre if they want to know about what they're what, what modules they should take, uh, what they should do in terms of getting back up to scratch with their work and so on, they, they have to come and see me. Well, they don't have to come and see me, but I would recommend they come to see me. So why do students visit advisors? I think these are the six main reasons why students come to visit me. Uh, it may not be true for all advisors. Uh, practice will vary. I should also say that as well as advisors, we have um, also have a personal tutors, and personal tutors serve a similar role to the advisor of studies. Um, the modern trend tends to be that um, uh, for advisors of studies, for, for larger groups of people rather than, uh, than uh, personal tutors these days, I would say. So attendance is a, a key thing. It's important to attend lectures and workshops and, uh, <coughs> and labs and so on if you're a physicist, because if you don't, uh, you're, putting, uh, you're making it quite difficult to learn. Uh, from my point of view as an advisor, I monitor attendance. It's like share prices, really. If you see the share price fall, well, maybe you're too late. You should have sold it, whatever, I don't know. Um, 
if you're talking about attendance, a fall in attendance often uh, precedes a period of difficulty in students' lives. So we do at Dundee, we, we do, uh, again, practice varies, but by and large we, more or less in all departments, now will uh, monitor attendance. If that had happened when I was an undergraduate, I'm afraid I would have been constantly with my advisor of studies. I wasn't the best, uh, the best attender, I have to say. But it does work, and so this is why we do it. Students have concerns about uh, their work, their, uh, <clears throat> their academic work, they fall behind. Increasingly, procrastination, doing something on your phone uh, before uh, doing your coursework is highly prevalent. I have students come to me very often now with sleep pattern problems. That's to do with Facebooking in the middle of the night. Uh, it's really quite difficult for students to get a grip on these things and to work a nine to five uh, lifestyle uh, when in their studies. They have personal concerns related to pastoral uh, matters, family, friends, uh, uh, and so on, difficulties with, uh, with uh, relationships, uh, illness, money problems, and so on. Students get depressed. Uh, we talk to them. Uh, depression is, sadly, can be a very long-term thing, uh, and they need counseling to, very often to, to overcome it or to be able to cope uh, with, uh, inter intermittently with depression. References, I get students writing to me uh, very often, years after I've taught them, uh, as I guess we all do, really, uh, for, for references, academic references, on uh, they've decided to become a teacher at the age of 35 because they don't like physics. Uh, but more often than not, most of the requirements for references are by uh, in fourth and fifth year students going out in the world of work. Uh, and as I've said, uh, students tend to uh, they tailor their courses by choosing options, and so as an academic, I discuss with them what options they can choose. Again, as we all have, being a student is just like being alive. We're all alive, we all do things, we share many things in common. There's nothing special, perhaps, about being a student, so we all need a work-life work balance, and students need a work-life balance. Uh, there is um, the Royal Bank of Scotland Student Living Index. This is quite an interesting document. Uh, it looks at uh, about 30 universities across the UK, I think, uh, and will give you an idea statistically of the breakdown of uh, various things. So if we look uh, over the, uh, the entries for Dundee, we find the average Dundee student spends uh, eight hours in work, typically. Parents contribute more, eight hours socialising and 30 hours studying. That's lectures, tutorials and so on and so forth, plus personal study. Uh, from that, uh, we can also find that 25% uh, of students find making ends meet financially very stressful. That's right up at the, the high end of the Likert scale, 8, 9, and 10 on a scale of 0 to 10, so very stressful. 45% uh, of students, however, twice as many, find studying for their degree uh, very stressful. So you might say that studying is more a stressful uh, um, uh, occupation than not having sufficient money <coughs> to do the things you want. Uh, but on top of that, uh, we find uh, that 70% of students who attend uh, university enjoy their studies uh, and 50% highly enjoy them. So it's a beneficial exercise for students because they go off into the world of work or whatever they want to do uh, and they also enjoy being a student. I did. So I'm conscious of time but uh, I was a, a, I'm a graduate of the University of Leicester. I graduated in 1977, first went to university in 1974. So that's the prospectus that I looked at when I chose to go to the University of Leicester. That's the t uh, 2017 uh, University of Dundee prospectus. Uh, and the thing on the, the little chart on the right there are the price increases between when I was an undergraduate and when a, a, an undergraduate now. You'll see one thing that's gone up, and this is probably, I think, unanimously we would agree a good thing. Uh, cigarettes are 42 times or so more expensive relatively now than they, uh, than they were then. So a packet of players number six, which is about 12p, uh, is a lot more than that now. Um, and we can see a few other things there. If you look at the, 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 uh, the rows which are in, uh, in yellow there, those are the incomings, wages and grants. Uh, so you can see wages have gone up uh, uh, 16 times in that period. Grants have gone up 12 times. So the first thing you notice is that uh, as a student, you're less well off than you were relative to the general public. Well, people might argue with that, of course. But uh, one reason why things have changed uh, in education is because there are six times more uh, full-time students than there, there were. Uh, I'm going to have to get a lot of a move on now because I've got one minute left. Uh, so I think what we can say is that um, one major factor is accommodation. That's, uh, as you can see, 18 times more expensive than it was. I paid £4.50 a week rent in 1974. 
In the summer, there's a lot of pressure as well because uh, I didn't find uh, it difficult to find uh, a job. Uh, in, uh, in the summer of 1974, I worked 40 hours a week in printing works and got paid 15 pounds. Uh, these days, it's difficult to get a job and the pressure's on to, uh, to be able to boost your CV by getting an internship, so perform and conform. Student staff, staff liaison, I'll skip over this because uh, we're obviously a, bit, a little bit pressed for time. That's about when students uh, collectively in their courses uh, have a representation uh, with staff in order to resolve issues which are uh, common to their, uh, their, uh, their, their, their situation. Uh, so the workloads are too large, they consider it too many assessments and so on and so forth. But there are some compensations. If you're an advisor of studies, you're involved in all these things, but you also get to go on nice visits uh, we went off to CERN uh, the year before last, in 2015, in search of the Higgs boson. We didn't find it because, in fact, the Large Hadron Collider uh, was down for servicing uh, at that time, but we still had fun uh, in the snow, climbed the mountain. Well, by using a funicular, uh, climbed the mountain. That's much easier. Uh, and so, in summary, um, I would say that while we, when I say we, I mean advisors of studies and probably me in particular, don't always get it right, uh, Dundee students, generally speaking, the feedback that we get are that we do uh, most things uh, in a way that they're positive about and we help them uh, and we do a reasonably uh, the job that we're supposed to do, advise them. In future, it's going to be a more stress, uh, stressful uh, process, I think, being a student. And there, are some, there are a number of pressures that will increase. Uh, professional advice and counselling, therefore, my colleagues in Inquiry Centre, I think they will get busier and busier in the future. Um, I asked the question, and not giving you any answer, uh, are students perhaps less resilient than we, they were when we were at university? When I say we, I mean me, 40 years ago. Um, I don't think one thing or the other thing, but perhaps there is a point what you, that you come to where there, you can give too much advice and make things, shall we say, too much one-stop shop. Maybe people, maybe students, young people in general should uh, think a little bit more about trying to um, improve their inner strength, their resilience, uh, and perhaps at the university we could be considering more about what we could do to facilitate that in the future so that problems can be solved by students themselves. But that's just a moot point, so thank you very much and apologies for running over.